Deep in the heart of Pawleys Island, nestled among the ancient woods near the winding Waccamaw River, stood the imposing Gero Mansion. Its antebellum architecture, once grand and regal, now lay in a state of decay, its walls whispering secrets of a troubled past. Legend had it that the Giro family, originally hailing from the bustling cities of New York and Boston, sought refuge in this remote southern town in the early 1800s. They were said to be fleeing the ghosts of their ancestors whose lives had been tragically cut short during the infamous Salem witch trials. The family's ancestral home, now known as the Giro Mansion, was their sanctuary, a place where they hoped to escape the demons that haunted their lineage. For two decades they found solace in the tranquil beauty of Pawleys Island, believing they had left their haunted past behind. But as time passed, the Giro family's demons began to stir once more. Strange occurrences plagued the mansion and the family members found themselves tormented by their own guilt and fears. Ghostly apparitions roamed the halls, their mournful cries echoing through the night. Emily, a young and intrepid investigator with an insatiable curiosity for the supernatural, had long been fascinated by the legends surrounding the Gero family. Determined to uncover the truth, she embarked on a journey to Pawleys Island, accompanied by James, a skeptical journalist eager to debunk the tales. Together, they ventured into the dilapidated mansion, its once opulent foyer now covered in a thick layer of dust. As they made their way through the grand halls, Emily stumbled upon a hidden compartment behind a bookshelf. Inside, she discovered an old diary, its pages yellowed with age. The diary revealed the family's harrowing escape from the clutches of Salem's dark history. It spoke of their hopes for a fresh start, far from the accusing eyes and spectral whispers that plagued their ancestors. But the entry that sent shivers down Emily's spine was a haunting confession. Our ancestors' demons have followed us. We thought we could escape, but the spirits of Salem have found us once again. With trepidation, Emily and James continued their exploration of the mansion. In a bedroom, Emily felt an otherworldly presence, a chill running down her spine. She called out, but the only response was a ghostly figure that appeared before her, causing her to scream in terror. In the study, James, ever the skeptic, found himself face to face with the inexplicable. Books flew off the shelves and the room filled with an eerie glow. It was a sight that left him questioning everything he had ever believed. As they delved deeper into the mansion's secrets, Emily discovered a hidden passage leading to a secret chamber beneath the house. In the darkness, surrounded by ancient artifacts and symbols, she heard a voice, soft yet resolute. Emily and James stood frozen as the voice echoed through the chamber. It was the voice of the Giro family's matriarch, her spirit haunting the mansion she once called home. The air turned cold, a chill that seemed to seep into their bones. The voice told a tale of love and loss, of betrayal and regret. The matriarch's spirit revealed the tragic past that had led to the Giro family's downfall, her voice filled with sorrow. She spoke of a curse that had been placed upon their family, a result of their ancestors' transgressions a curse that had trapped her spirit within the confines of the mansion. We are bound by the chains of our past, she said, her voice resonating with regret. A silence fell over the chamber as the spirit's plea echoed through the room. Help us find peace, she implored. Emily and James were left to contemplate the gravity of the task before them. The spirit's plea hung heavy in the air, a stark reminder of the haunted past of the Jero family. Guided by the spirit's plea, Emily and James steeled themselves for the task at hand. With a sense of purpose, they began gathering the necessary items for the ritual. A lock of hair from the matriarch, a letter penned by the patriarch, and a family heirloom. A locket passed down generations. Their actions were deliberate, their movements echoing in the silence of the secret chamber. They arranged the items in a circle, the locket at the center. Emily began to recite an incantation, her voice steady despite the chill in the air. James, holding the letter and the lock of hair, joined in. Their voices echoed through the chamber, intertwining with the whispers of the past. As the incantation reached its crescendo, the air in the chamber seemed to shimmer, 
the spirits of the Gerot family began to materialize, their forms translucent and ethereal. They hovered around Emily and James, their expressions filled with hope and gratitude. You have freed us, the matriarch spirit said, her voice filled with relief. Thank you, she whispered, her form beginning to fade. One by one, the spirits of the Gero family thanked Emily and James before disappearing. With a final whisper of thanks, the spirits disappeared. Leaving Emily and James alone in the chamber, the weight of the past finally lifted from the mansion. As Emily and James emerged from the secret chamber, the mansion seemed to take a breath, its walls shuddering with relief. But in the distance they heard the roll of thunder, the sky darkening ominously. Suddenly a bolt of lightning struck the mansion, setting it ablaze. Startled, Emily and James sprinted towards the entrance, the roaring fire hot on their heels. They barely made it outside as the mansion's grand front door collapsed behind them, engulfed in flames. There they stood, panting and wide-eyed, watching as the Grand Giro Mansion, the symbol of the family's tragic history, was consumed by the ferocious fire. The flames licked the night sky, the mansion's silhouette dancing within the inferno. The fire, it seemed, wasn't a destructive force, but a purifying one. It was the mansion's rebirth, a fiery phoenix rising from its own ashes. As the mansion burned, it seemed to echo the tragic past of the Giro family, a final fiery tribute to their haunting tale. The spirits they had just released were finally free. Their tale told, their legacy living on in the hearts of Emily and James. And as the mansion turned to ashes, they couldn't help but feel a sense of peace. The haunting was over, the spirits freed, and the Giraud mansion, though in ruins, stood prouder than ever before. In the aftermath, Emily and James stood in silence, their eyes locked on the glowing embers of the once grand mansion. The smell of charred wood hung heavy in the air, a stark reminder of the fiery spectacle they had just witnessed. As the last of the flames flickered out, they could not help but reflect on the incredible journey they had embarked upon. The Gero mansion, once a symbol of a haunted past, had become a beacon of closure and peace. Emily, her mind brimming with thoughts, turned to James, in his eyes, she saw a reflection of her own feelings, a strange mix of sadness, relief and satisfaction. They had not only survived the haunting, but had also helped free the spirits trapped within the mansion's walls. They had become the bearers of the Giro family's tale, a story of tragedy, hauntings and ultimately liberation. As dawn broke, they left Pawleys Island, their footsteps echoing in the silence left by the burning mansion. The Giro mansion might have been reduced to ashes, but its story lived on, carried in the hearts of Emily and James. As they drove away, the island faded into the distance, leaving behind a tale that would forever be etched in their memories. The aftermath, they thought, was not about destruction, but about rebirth and liberation. As they left Pawleys Island, they carried with them the story of the Gero family, a tale of tragedy, hauntings and ultimately liberation. You have been watching The Dark Encrypt. Subscribe so you don't miss out on anything.